Talking about music. That's what we do on Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E.net. We are unplugged and totally uncut with Samara Brown from NBC's The Voice. I'm doing good. How are you doing? Absolutely fantastic. I'm sitting inside a beautiful RV overlooking a lake in, in North Carolina. We're actually, we're in South Carolina. These states you know, are so connected. Oh, nice. I'm <laughs> jealous. <laughs> where, where, whereabouts are you hiding out today? I'm in uh, Bushwick, Brooklyn. Really? See, now, you you just saying that. I mean, it's, there, there's so much history about Brooklyn. It's like right away I'm like motivated. It's like, oh, my God, there's so much that goes on in Brooklyn. See, you want to be in Brooklyn, and I want to be in the RV by the lake. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're in such a, a historic part of the world because so much music, I mean, I mean, all the way back to the 50s and the 40s and stuff like that, have come from that area of the world. It's true, yes. It is a, an actual just like hub of music. But I actually wasn't here for a very long time. I just moved here in March. Wow. Before I was mostly in the Bronx. I was going to say, you came from that other B word, the Bronx. And, and that, once again, it's like, <laughs> yeah, man, that town's got history. Oh, my God, she's from the Bronx. That means something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you have so much enthusiasm about the Bronx because most people don't. <laughs> <laughs> your, your journey on NBC's The Voice, what is it like for you to, to go from you know the New York area out to Los Angeles where the, it just feels like that all creative people are welcome? come and enjoy um it's a culture shock because uh the vibe in la is so opposite from new york but uh at the same time you know um i love to travel and it and you know after covid i haven't been able to really travel anywhere or see anything so like to come back and return to la after having previously been on the show when my sister was on it's kind of it's kind of like full circle and it feels really great to be there. I also just love the weather. Yes. <laughs> oh my God. Perfect. Well, what's, what's so weird about California is that Los Angeles can get really super hot and beautiful and all that kind of stuff, but you go like 200 miles up the road on the Pacific coast highway and you're freezing up there in San Francisco. Oh yeah. I've actually been to San Francisco. Oh my San Francisco God. was a favorite of mine. Though. Yep. Did you take that Pacific coast highway? Yes, Not, we did. Isn't that beautiful? It's gorgeous. <laughs> so as, as a creative mind, did it inspire you to write? Did you feel something? Oh, absolutely. Just the, just all of the art on the street alone in yep. San Francisco was just breathtaking. Like, all you could want to do is create in the city like that. Mm hmm I've, I've always believed, in fact, I'll, I'll never forget when we were there, it was, I, I said, I, I swear there's many earthquakes always happening and that's why I feel incredible because my feet are getting a massage in San Francisco. <laughs> That's a different way to look at it. <laughs> I've never experienced an earthquake, and that's probably the only thing about California that absolutely terrifies me. <laughs> right? <laughs> that's like that's like hearing. We the don't Carol have those in New York. <laughs> well, well, you guys ha have kind of stole something from the Carolinas. We were always known for the hurricanes, and now it seems like you guys are getting those things up there. I know, I know. I'd still take a hurricane over an earthquake. <laughs> I don't want to know what it's like to have the entire ground shaking beneath me. That that I would have to question my entire existence. <laughs> so stepping out there on that stage, on NBC's The Voice stage, how, how do you find the courage and the confidence to go out there and face four turned chairs? Um, it's, well... How do I find the confidence? I don't really know. I mean, I guess because I've been doing this for so long, you know, I, I try not to think about the coaches being there. I'm just like, okay, let me get to stage and just perform my song the way I love to perform and what happens, happens, you know. You kind of don't dwell too much on, like, the outcome of of what's going to happen after you perform. You kind of just focus on the performance itself. Yep. And, I guess that's how I find the courage to do it. <laughs> is is it muscle memory? I mean, do you think that's what it is? Because you've practiced it so much, you just know this is this is what's got to happen. Oh yeah, I mean, I've been singing since I was five, so like singing to me is kind of like breathing at this point. So it's definitely a lot of muscle memory. I mean, I was nervous as hell still, but <laughs> it was it, it still feels familiar, very familiar to me. Did your sister coach you because she was back there on season three? She definitely gave me some advice and some coaching for, before I even uh, went to L.A. So the, 
the one thing that I've, I, I'm always inspired by, because as you know, watching it week after week on on the flat screen, is that you guys look like that you choreographed all the moves because those camera angles are flying around in all direction. They're catching every single breath you guys are singing. It's like, how in a week did you guys do this? I know uh, it is a lot. Some of it we um, we the singers do kind of like choreograph and like some we also get some advice on you know what would look good when we're on stage but at the same time you know we we also kind of like me and Brittany kind of like freestyled our thing and then we were like oh this works let's do this (laughs) some of it is choreographed and some of it is just kind of like just feeling on stage just like instinct so like when you sing an Aretha Franklin song, is does your heart go, uh oh, or or do you go, Yeah, I'm on to this. I'm from Brooklyn. <laughs> it depends on the Aretha song. But for yeah. this song specifically, I I performed this song and I love this song, so I was like, very excited. Wow. So the the world of religion is so important to you. Do you do you feel that vibe moving through you in, in every step when when you're on that stage? Um, I feel the influence of, you know, my childhood growing up in church, yep. uh, most definitely, because, you know, I don't know if I would have been a singer if I had never attended church. So that definitely is always going to be there with me, regardless of where I go as a singer. But um, it, it definitely is that kind of like schooling, I feel, that has kind of prepared me vocally for a lot of different aspects of the music industry. Don't don't you think that that schooling is part of, partly because that that when when you're singing in a church you're not just singing words you're telling a story and you're not the opening act for the preacher guy you're you're up there still reaching out to people. Absolutely, it's a very um, obviously spiritual experience where you know we we are feeling what we're singing so we have to we automatically connect to what it is that we're saying and I feel like that storytelling aspect transfers over to even to other music, other secular music. It still has that story that people want to listen to. And so you have to kind of like know how to tap into that. When, when, you, when you're with the choir and things like that, do, do they allow you to, you know, like, okay, man, uh, Samara, this is where you break free. Just let your heart go, man. Just let it out the way you need it, the way you're <laughs> feeling it in the moment. I mean, yeah, you know, I've gotten some lead parts uh, singing with the choir, you know. I mean, I do enjoy just, uh, in general harmony and doing harmony yeah. I don't mind being the the background vocals but at the same time I mean who doesn't love getting the lead everybody loves getting the solo we all want the solo wow see and and that's that the the, the fun part about music is you're right that, that that person that's back there on the harmony because in reality would would music be incomplete without harmony you've you've got to have harmony Oh, yeah, absolutely. One note, you know, corresponding to a different note and that relation to each other is what's so beautiful about music. And doesn't that also teach you, um, you know, when when you work with somebody with harmony, that it also makes you a better person on the streets as well because you know you've got to work with others? Oh, yeah, definitely teaches you how to function with different voices because in a, and with just background singing, you know, it's not just hitting the correct note. You also have to try and meld with the style and way that other singers are singing. So it definitely teaches, you know, just in general, overall harmony with others. I, I read recently that you like making music your own, that this is not karaoke. And, that, and that's that's so inspiring because there's there's too much where people go, I'm a great singer. Let me show, uh, let me perform it for you. And, you. and it's like, well, it's just like the song on the radio. I need originality. <laughs> well, yeah, because I mean, I can't really connect to it if I'm singing it the way the original singer sang it, because, you know, I'm, we don't have the same voice, you know, regardless of my ability or the other singer's ability, you know, we're not the same in terms of vocals. Every single voice is is distinct. And so I have to perform it in a way where it feels not only comfortable for my voice, but it feels like where I'm actually, you know, where I don't sound like I'm lying yeah. on stage. <laughs> it has to feel genuine. <laughs> I, I'm such a people watcher. If you would put me in the center of all of those creative people, I would sit there and I would just want to try everything that they're doing to find out if, you know, because it's, it's like looking for a needle in a haystack. I mean, there's always going to be something there that you can learn from. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I learn just from living each day, you know, a different thing and different aspect about sound, about music, about 
working with people about where I want to go in my career. You know, you learn something in every day and and how you want to move forward in your craft. Yeah, yeah. Ed Sheeran, he's a, he's he's a big punch in the arm uh, this season. I mean, it's what what is it like to be with with someone like Ed Sheeran? He's uh he's super cool. He's like super laid back. It was kind of like just like a spirit an experience of being in the studio with him which is crazy but um uh to get his advice to get his uh for him to be an advisor to us for uh the voice is just like as crazy as me getting advice from john lennon i mean it's just like (laughs) i'm kind of just like going at everybody that's giving me advice on the show it's I'm trying to just take it all in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because in reality, when 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 you're uh, inside that studio or even even um, out there performing, I mean, the, some of the biggest names in the world of music are right there in the front row. They're 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 in your front row. Yeah, yeah, it's it's bonkers. Really, is what it is. I mean, I still can't believe for my blind Ariana bowed to me. I just can't like. I can't process that. I was like, I don't know how to respond to that. <laughs> so I was just, thank you, thank you. It's, That's why I keep just smiling and laughing and bowing my head because I have no idea what to do. Are, are you documenting any of this in the way of like journaling or anything like that? Oh yeah, yeah. I've well, I've been journaling since I was a little kid. So like, I love to write. <laughs> So I definitely have been like talking about this experience. I also, it just helps me relax when I write in my journal about the experience. Oh, I'm a, I'm a daily writer. So I've been doing it for 26 years and it's, it's, it's just the most amazing feeling when you can just let the universe move through you. Yes, absolutely. Um, whether that's in a song or whether it's in my journal, it feels good to also just get it on the page. Cause I feel like once it's on the page, it's not in my head stressing me out anymore <laughs> do, do you find yourself in a situation of dear future reader in other words there's going to be somebody that's going to read what what you've put down on paper long after you're gone i hope not <laughs> <laughs> my journal is super personal so <laughs> i've even written on each of my journal books like in the beginning like do not read unless i'm i pass away <laughs> because, like, i don't really want this to be kind of like a group reading experience <laughs> but no i do write to my journal though as if i'm speaking to a person exactly exactly isn't that where you learn things because you know it's it's, it's it's breaking things down. I call it, or I, actually, I call it stream thinking. It's like it's you know, it's just it's just whatever's happening in free form. Yeah, exactly. And it's almost like I'm talking to myself. Yeah, and- but like the other self is a lot more aware of you know any crap that I'm trying to pull. <laughs> <laughs> so so does the does the page ask you questions? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll make a statement and they'll be like, well, come on, you know, you know, that's not true. And I'm going to be like, you know what? You're right. Um, I'm lying. I don't know why. <laughs> oh, how did you catch me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got me again. <laughs> so what, what is one thing that has changed in you because of the writing? Because I, I, you know, I came from the Julia Cameron, the artist way uh, school of thought where, where it is all about doing morning pages and things like that. Um, I guess the way that it changes me is um, it gives me a different way of analyzing uh, who I am and how I choose to live my life, you know, because it's kind of like going to see a therapist, really. Yeah. Because it it allows me to be more critical of the things that I do as opposed to like me just thinking I'm in my head. You know, when I'm in my head, I'm just making excuses for everything that I do that I feel that is wrong. But when I'm writing in my journal, I'm a lot more critical of myself, which is I don't know if that's strange or not, but it, and in that way, you know, it kind of helps me self-analyze in a way where I'll be honest, like, cause I feel like once it's on paper, you know, I can't really lie. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard when I'm writing to lie to myself. <laughs> Do you have a favorite writing instrument? I mean, it's, it's, I have five of them that I've been using for 20 some odd years. And I mean, and I, and I'm a dipper too. I, I use an inkwell. I dip, go over and write, dip, oak, go over and write. Oh my gosh, I'm so jealous because I bought like a bunch of these um, feathers Yes, <laughs> because I wanted to create an authentic quill because I do have ink and I do have like a metal feather pen that I got in Italy, but it's like cheap. It's 
not like you know an authentic pen yeah but i wanted to create like a super authentic quill pen because i'm obsessed with like writing instruments <laughs> yep that's me that's me and, and the, the i've got one the my my last book that was published uh, was written about john lennon so i use the uh the john lennon mont blanc pen that's the only place i've ever used that writing instrument Oh my gosh, I'm so jealous. <laughs> I can't. But but we're on the same I, street I, I here want, though. If, oh yeah, if I could, I would have a whole desk with writing material. Yep. <laughs> I've also wanted one of those like little wax stamps and like <laughs> authentic paper to kind of send like old school letters. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of a geek. I don't know if you noticed this, but I'm a very big geek when it comes to certain stuff. Oh my god! I mean, I just, I just the uh, when, when it comes to me, are you like me in the way that with journals, it's not like I have one of them. I, I'm like I'm sitting around and there's like four or five of them that I that I go into for different thoughts that I'm going to put down. Oh yeah, I've had I've, I've had my journal. Well, some of them I have to put away because. Some of them are ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the ones from when I'm super, super young. I'm just like, all right, I can't, I can't read all of this. <laughs> I'm just like a completely different person and a completely different lifetime for me. So it's, sometimes it's too strange checking out those journals. And then some of them are really enjoyable. They're very funny. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what happens when, let's say, a lyric or a sentence appears on the page do you instantly go oh my god I, I had to wade through all that other stuff just to get to this this sentence um songwriting for me comes in a very uh unique way it comes in different ways each time sometimes i'll only hear a melody and write oh, lyrics wow. onto that or sometimes i'll automatically hear lyrics and I'll be like, all right, I gotta write these down. Or I'll like record them on my phone to try to make sure that I capture them. You know, it comes in like waves or sometimes uh, because I, I like to write a lot of poetry. Yep. I'll just, I'll either decide like, you know what, I'm gonna leave this as a poem or there'll be other times I'm like, wow, this would be really good in a song, that kind of vibe. But it, it's never planned. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that's the fun part about it is because you never know what you're going to be writing about. It's just that we're going to have something to talk about it in the end. Exactly. Yeah. And, and I think that's where like a, a lot of I call them writer hiders that that a lot of people who write in secrecy is they, they will you know, they, they don't want to talk about the experience of, of what it is that they went through when the words were coming through because they can't explain it. Yeah. Just you, you like, you know, just just fall in love with the, the plan uh, or the or just the free form of it all. Right, right, definitely. Just fall in love with the be, accept the process. Yeah, yeah. Really. I mean, well, most of the time, what I'm writing is relating to what I'm feeling at the moment. So yep. if you're paying attention, <laughs> you're getting the full story right there. <laughs> I love it, Samara. Where can people go to give you some love to find out more about your music and about your journey? Um, I'm definitely on all social media: Instagram, Samara Brown official. Um, Twitter underscore Samara Brown underscore. Um, I'm new to TikTok. I'm trying it out. <laughs> but you can also search me up as Samara Brown official on TikTok as well. I love it. You got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Oh, awesome. I would love to come back. Well, you be, you be brilliant today, okay? All right. Thank you so much, Errol.